the night on Reporting Scotland. Tributes pour in for Frightened Rabbit star Scott Hutchison after his body is found near South Queen's Ferry. Scott was so well loved and he was such a brilliant person. I mean his music was incredible but also he was just a joy to be around. He was always so welcoming. Also on the programme, Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn says naval ships should be built in the UK during a visit to Govan Shipyard. Stuck in unacceptable homes, tens of thousands of disabled Scots are on waiting lists for suitable housing. A man is jailed for 18 months after this 70 mile an hour chase through Glasgow. And a no-show for Lennon. The Hibs manager fails to appear at the club's press conference amid speculation about his future. The family of the frightened rabbit singer Scott Hutchison have spoken of their overwhelming sadness at his death. The musician's body was found last night near South Queen's Ferry. His family say they're proud of the way he battled depression. Fans and figures from the world of music have been paying tribute. Stephen Godden reports. A collaborator, a creator, a Scottish success story. There have been a flood of tributes to Scott Hutchison today but finding the words hasn't been easy. As the lead singer of Frightened Rabbit, he sold albums, lots of them, on both sides of the Atlantic. The formula that took the band round the world very much homegrown. Scott sang the songs to the beat of his brother Grant's drum from the days they formed in their bedroom in Selkirk and throughout. That was very much at the heart of their songs, of their passion, and on stage, you know, you were thrilling to see them live, interacting together, brothers who'd been writing songs forever. I've always liked the idea that uh, inanimate objects have emotions and, and personalities. And this documentary about Glasgow Art School, where he studied, offers a glimpse of the creative process that struck a chord with so many fans. Wish I had, wish I had. But Scott Hutchison's music could also point towards his troubles. Lyrics say his family, written by an artist who wore his heart on his sleeve. So two social media posts that triggered their concern early on Wednesday morning. The hotel in South Queensferry, where he was last seen, was the starting point for the police search. He has disappeared in the past um, for, for only ever a, a period of a couple of days. So, um, you, you know, he's... He, he, he is fragile, um, he needs help, and we just want to come home. The discovery of his body last night left them utterly devastated. A statement released this afternoon said he was passionate, articulate and charismatic, as well as being one of the funniest and kindest people we knew. In addition to his musical success, Scott was a wonderful son, brother, uncle and friend. In Glasgow today, an event with which the singer had strong links over the years, as both performer and supporter. There was a humility about him around how he was feeling and, how, and sharing his experience with people. So I think, you know, we all felt we had a stake in him doing well and that'll be part of, of why we've seen such an outpouring at the moment. Tributes on social media have come from across the globe, from the world of music and beyond. The last word in Scott Hutchison's final tweet to fans was thanks. Today has shown that feeling was mutual. Stephen Gordon reporting Scotland. The Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn has called for contracts to build ships for the Royal Navy to be awarded to UK yards. Speaking during a visit to Govan, he called on the UK government to scrap plans to put a billion pound contract out to foreign tender. But the Conservatives say inviting international bids means savings for taxpayers. Our business correspondent David Henderson is on the River Clyde for us tonight. David. Yes, Sally, in recent years, almost every warship bought for the Royal Navy has been built here in Scotland, either on the Clyde or at Rosyth 
in Fife, but when it comes to the huge support vessels that carry the food and fuel used by the Royal Navy, it's a different story. The last one was built on the other side of the world. Today, the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, said that threatens jobs here, and he wants it stopped. A gigantic feat of engineering, but when it sails, what comes next? At Rosyth in Fife, they're fitting out HMS Prince of Wales, the second of two aircraft carriers, the biggest ships ever built for the Royal Navy. But there's no new contract on the horizon for the hundreds of workers. Today, on the banks of the Clyde, the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, took aim at the UK government over the way shipbuilding contracts are open to foreign competition. Unfortunately, the Conservative government is currently trashing that tradition by offering up the Ministry of Defence's most recent contract for three new fleet-solid support ships to overseas companies to be built elsewhere. That decision is wrong. Right now, every warship in the Royal Navy is British-built, but this supply ship and others like it were built in South Korea. Under Labour's plans, ships like this could no longer be ordered from a foreign yard. And they're so big, they'd have to be built in pieces around the British coast, like the aircraft carriers, and put together at Rosyth. The SNP accused Jeremy Corbyn of playing catch-up with what they've been saying for years. The best shipbuilders are found in Scotland, they're found in the Clyde and they're found in Rosyth and Fife. And that the, the key skills to build naval warships and to build support ships are found here in Scotland. On the Clyde, the Govan Yard's busy cutting steel for new Type 26 frigates. The UK government says this work will secure 4,000 jobs for at least 20 years and they claim that, far from crisis, there's a renaissance in national shipbuilding. Now, the UK government is preparing to launch a competition to build those new support vessels, the ones Jeremy Corbyn wants to see built here. Now, I can tell you that the, the last Defence Secretary, Sir Michael Fallon, last time he was up, a few months ago, he told me it was a really good idea that the competition was opened up to foreign competition because it meant better value for money for UK taxpayers. Now, not long after that, he was forced to resign and we'll soon find out if his successor still agrees with him or whether he now agrees with Jeremy Corbyn. Sally. David Henderson, thank you very much. The funeral has taken place of the Inverness man Liam Colgan, who disappeared during his brother's stag weekend in Hamburg in February. His body was discovered, was recovered rather, from the River Elbe in the German city ten weeks later. Some of the mourners at his funeral in Inverness wore Dundee United colours, the club Liam supported. His Royal Mail colleagues wore their uniforms as a tribute to his work as a postman. Liam's death has been described by his family as a tragic accident. 89 beds are to be cut at Cross House Hospital near Kilmarnock. NHS Ayrshire and Arran say it's because they'll be providing enhanced community care and rehabilitation services. The health board say additional beds are available at Cross House for patients who finish their treatment but who've been unable to be discharged. Seven passengers involved in a bus crash in Glasgow, which injured 29 people, are to sue the operator First Bus. The bus crashed on a slip road to the Clydeside Expressway close to the Clyde Tunnel last month. The bus is believed to have struck a barrier before mounting an embankment and overturning. There's been a warning that business in Scotland could suffer in the row over EU powers returning to the UK after Brexit comes from David Liddington, the UK minister leading talks with the Scottish government. But Scottish ministers insist they've offered a solution. This from our political editor, Brian Taylor. Scottish business leaders in Edinburgh in search of lunch and reassurance about Brexit. This row concerns EU powers in devolved areas like farming. That's big business, that's food. Scottish ministers say those powers should return to Holyrood. <laughs> Arriving at the CBI lunch, David Liddington argues that 24 powers must be retained by Westminster for now, until new rules are agreed for the UK market. He wants Holyrood to compromise. 
It's important for Scottish business, for jobs and growth in Scotland and for Scottish customers that we don't pile extra form filling, extra costs on Scottish business as a result of uh, the UK common market breaking down as we leave the European Union. So keeping that UK-wide common market single set of standards on things like labelling and food safety is really important to jobs and, and to customer prices. Lengthy negotiations have produced progress but no deal, although Wales has settled. Mike Russell stresses that every party at Holyrood, other than the Tories, now backs further UK concessions. This is an easy deal to do, but the UK government has to respect the devolution settlement. And so far, it's not only refusing to do so, it's trying to change it unilaterally, no matter what the Scottish Parliament says. MSPs will vote next Tuesday on whether to endorse Westminster's bill withdrawing from the EU. Right now, it's a no. David Liddington knows that Westminster can legislate without that consent, but he still hopes for a deal, either next week or next month, the last moment possible. Brian Taylor, Reporting Scotland. Almost 10,000 disabled Scots are on housing waiting lists and more than 60,000 could be waiting for their current home to be adapted. That's according to the Equality and Human Rights Commission in Scotland. The Scottish Government says it's already taking action to ensure everyone has access to a home of the right size, in the right location or flexible enough to suit any requirements. Aileen Clark reports. Jack Russell Max does his best to keep this family's spirits up. But with Lorraine having a number of mobility issues and eye problems linked to diabetes and Stuart being diagnosed with motor neuron disease, life in this rented flat is tough. Well, you can see here we've got the bath with the shower over it. There's no way that Stuart can get into it because he's not got the control of his muscles to be able to get himself in. So if we're needing Stuart to have a shower, we need to go up to my mum and dad's house. Lorraine is worried about the damp too, as the oldest of their two daughters has cystic fibrosis. And despite being on housing waiting lists for years, they still haven't been moved to a more suitable home and they're feeling increasingly desperate. They gave Stuart two and a half years to live and that was 10 months ago. And I feel just now that we should be able to relax and be making memories and doing things for Stuart. And for the girls and as horrendous as it sounds Stuart can't even die in peace because he's constantly worrying about this he's constantly worrying what if he goes before the, the time that they've said when, when am I going to stay with the girls you know this photograph was taken just eight years ago Lorraine has had many operations since then and up until a year ago Stuart was working as a mechanical fitter he was diagnosed with motor neuron disease in July. But you're clearly worried about Lorraine and, and your daughters. And that's upsetting for you. Yeah. About the future. Mr and Mrs Morris are just one of around 10,000 disabled families on Scotland's housing lists, according to a latest report. Well, the first problem is that councils simply don't have right, the right information about disabled people's needs. The second big issue is that there simply aren't enough um, accessible houses being built. We're calling for a 10% quota on all new houses. Our own research suggests that there's 17,000 disabled wheelchair users in Scotland poorly housed. This is the shower room. Mm -hmm. The chairs get plenty of room to come in. The Scottish Government say they'll issue guidance to councils on targets for wheelchair accessible houses. Here in Glasgow, the council has set their own targets and this widow is happy to show around the head of housing to explain what a difference this specially designed house made to her late husband in his last few years. And when we got this, it was a new lease of life to me and my husband. It was completely different altogether. We were really happy at the end. We were really, really happy. I love this house. I love it. So did he. Back in Helensborough, the Morris family can only hope for such a move. Their local housing association say they're continuing to work with them, but have offered them one ground floor flat. The family turned it down. The Morrises say they're open to most places, though, all around the Helensborough area, and their families are willing to help adapt somewhere even. Aileen Clark, Reporting Scotland.
You're watching BBC Reporting Scotland at 16 minutes to 7. A reminder of tonight's top story. Tributes pour in for the frightened rabbit star Scott Hutchison after his body is found near South Queen's Ferry. And still to come, finding loving homes for sculpture, the group giving dumped works of art new owners. Dramatic video footage has been released of a car being pursued by a police helicopter through the streets of Glasgow. It eventually led to the arrest and conviction of one of Scotland's most dangerous crime gangs. One of them was the driver of the car, Mark Richardson, who today was jailed for 18 months for culpable and reckless conduct. Laura Maxwell has the story. The car you can see here is being driven by Mark Richardson, a convicted drugs dealer from Edinburgh. It's December the 19th, 2016, at around half past five in the evening, and Richardson, who was under police surveillance, realises he's being followed. Here, he squeezes between two cars, narrowly missing one, before taking off on the wrong side of the road. Travelling at speeds of more than 65 miles per hour through North Glasgow, the 31-year-old weaves in and out of traffic, eventually cutting in front of oncoming cars, with no consideration for his own or anyone else's safety. A brief pause as he decides where to go next. When he comes back into view, he's on the pavement and hits the accelerator once again. Cornered, he pushes onto the pavement again, narrowly missing a pedestrian. Moments later, he drives into the path of an oncoming lorry. Determined to evade capture, Richardson runs lights, jumps between lanes and in this instance just misses a bus. He eventually abandoned the car at a filling station before being arrested. Today, Richardson appeared at Glasgow Sheriff Court, where he was sentenced to 18 months for reckless and culpable conduct. He's already in prison serving nine years for the possession of a gun. Laura Maxwell, reporting Scotland. A prisoner has gone missing while on home leave from Castle Huntley Prison. 38-year-old Martin Stewart has not been seen for two days and is known to have connections in Paisley. Anyone with any information is being urged to get in contact. The first mosque to be built in the Western Isles has opened ahead of Ramadan. A semi-derelict store building in Stornoway in the Isle of Lewis has been converted for use by the island's Muslim community of more than 50 people. Until now, they've worshipped in their own homes and booked community halls for celebrating religious festivals. Glasgow has officially lodged its bid to persuade Channel 4 to set up headquarters in the city. The First Minister is among those backing the bid, which could mean up to 300 staff transferring to three new hubs outside London. The shortlist of cities will be announced at the end of May, with the choice of sites made in September. Football and the Hibernian boss Neil Lennon will remain in his job with the Easter Road Club next season. That's according to his assistant Gary Parker. After the defeat to Hearts on Wednesday night, Lennon said he would consider his future Easter Road during the summer. Our reporter Brian McLaughlin was at the club's training ground today, but Neil Lennon was nowhere to be seen. An empty chair at Hibs training ground with the media waiting expectantly on Neil Lennon before his assistant gives us the news and the whereabouts of the manager. He's OK. He's, uh, he's had flu for the last couple of weeks. Uh, and uh, he's at home in Glasgow. He, uh, he's ever slept, his wife woke him up, and then he's gone back to sleep, which is, in fact, a true story. Uh, so he'll be, he'll be coming in some point today. When, I don't know. After Wednesday's game, Lennon spoke about his disappointment on his players' performance and how he may consider his own future. Comments that came as a surprise to those in the dressing room. Definitely, um, you know, because uh, looking in on it, we thought we, you know, had a, a very good season for our first season back in the top flight. So, you know, obviously for the gaffer to say that, but as I said, he's his own man, so he's got his own thoughts, and you know, he, did, he obviously hadn't shared that with us, so we were as shocked as everyone else. However, the man beside him in the dugout insists his comments should not be taken too seriously. That was the heat at the moment. You know what he's like. He's a winner after a game. Things don't go his way. He just he just lets it all go. He, he doesn't like getting beat. Anything cards or whatever it is, uh, and he loses. And he you know and he just said a few things. And he, you know it, it'd be in tomorrow. He'll speak to you, and you'll see he's okay. Neil Lennon is expected back at training tomorrow before the club's final game of the season on Sunday against Rangers at Easter Road. Brian McLaughlin reporting Scotland, Edinburgh. 
He's won every major trophy in Scottish football, but Celtic captain Scott Brown is still setting himself targets. He says one day he'd like to manage the club. Brown, who could become the first player to captain a side to back-to-back -back clean sweeps of domestic trophies, also says he has unfinished business on the field. David Curry reports. Lustig. Brown! He's done just about everything this season, the worst but effort score! In the world. Brown will find the net anyway. Russell had gone. Scott Brown is never far from the action and never far from silverware. Last season, he skippered Celtic to all three major Scottish trophies. He's on course to do likewise this season. He's already looking beyond that. I've done quite a lot recently and we're always pushing. We always want to do better. I want to do better in the Champions League for this club. Have a longer run in Europe, uh, whether it's one or the other. Uh, I think just before I retire. Brown doesn't want to stop playing any time soon. When he does, he fancies a career in management, perhaps at Celtic. Who wouldn't? I think uh, everyone would love this job, every fan, every every manager, especially in Scotland. And as you, as you see, we've got a top quality manager from down in England that almost won the Premier League with Liverpool and he wanted to come here, so it shows you the pull this club has got. I've seen a lot of managers come here and leave with grey hair and I've also seen managers love the, love the job and I think Brendan's the perfect one for that and he loves the fans, he loves the football club so it shows you it's that love for the club and the desire to, to want it to do well and I, I've got that. He's one of Scottish football's biggest personalities and it looks like he will be for years to come, on or off the field. David Curry, reporting Scotland. A bearded seal normally found in the Arctic Ocean has arrived in Shetland. Only a handful of them have ever been spotted around Britain. The visit has attracted a lot of attention from locals. A group of artists have launched an adoption scheme for modern sculpture. The Sculpture Placement Group aims to match artworks often dumped or put in storage after exhibition with new homes. Our arts correspondent Pauline McLean reports. Glasgow likes to think big when it comes to art. This was one of the largest pieces ever commissioned for the GI Festival, an 80 metre long canvas around an old gasworks. But what happens to the work after the festival is over? For artist Felix Welch, there was a rather unglamorous ending for his work, created for a group show in 2016. It became homeless because the exhibition finished and it was always, it was always a kind of non-commercial thing. There wasn't really a, a, kind of a, a home for it, so it ended up in my mum and dad's garage among all the other, kind of <laughs> all the other rejects. It turned out he wasn't alone. A group of artists in Glasgow decided to gather the artworks left behind and try and rehome them. The sculpture placement group was born. This was their first match, the whale's tail, found in a field and now given pride of place outside the city of Glasgow College. This isn't old rubbish that people have thrown out. These are world-class artworks. They've been shown on an international stage. They've been shown in some of the best public institutions we have in Scotland. And, uh, and now it's, it's sort of time for them to be seen in a different context and to reach new audiences. And this week, Felix's forgotten artwork found a different space in this architect's office. I think we definitely made the right choice. It's fantastic. It just sits in with this building perfectly. And they believe they've gained so much more than a work of art. Cool. Felix is going to come into the office. He's going to do a talk to our architects. It's going to create a nice discussion about art within our workspace and um, hopefully have a, a small opening as well. Ten works have been allocated so far, but the sculpture placement group say there are many more out there and those willing to adopt an artwork, large or small, should get in touch. Polly McLean, reporting Scotland, Glasgow. Let's get the weather now with Christopher, who's going to tell us all about a wiggling weather front. Is that right? <laughs> On Sunday. We're agog. It's giving us a few headaches for Sunday's forecast, Sally, but uh, Saturday looks good. Let's uh, take a look. Thank you. Hello there. Some lovely spells of sunshine for some of us today. This was... Uh, 
the Aberdeenshire coast earlier and pretty fine across the northern Isles, but elsewhere cloudy with outbreaks of rain, courtesy of this weather front, which continues to move eastwards across the mainland overnight, giving a few spells of rain further east. Behind it drying up, that's where we'll have the lowest temperatures, four or five Celsius, where it remains cloudy and damp, more like seven to nine. Now, uh, this weekend, uh, quite a complex pressure pattern there. There's our wiggling weather front trapped in between, and it's giving us a few headaches for Sunday. Uh, First thing tomorrow, affecting parts of the far north and northeast, cloudy with some rain pushing through Orkney, perhaps brushing Shetland, then clearing. Elsewhere, dry, fine, sunny, pretty decent actually. By mid-afternoon, not too bad at all. Temperatures responding up to around 16 Celsius. The chance of a few showers developing over Northern Ireland, perhaps pushing in towards Kintar, Argyll and Butte generally, and in towards Galloway, but if you catch one, you'll be unlucky. The chance of an isolated shower through the Central Highlands, but for most of us, Saturday is dry. It's fine. It's, it's nice. Wind's lighter than today. Cloudy at times through Orkney, but clearing, and a veil of cloud there across Shetland, taking good time to clear. So if you're hill walking or climbing, certainly across western ranges, plenty of sunshine around, winds from the south. Eastern ranges, a little more fair weather cloud, and certainly across the northeast, some mistiness to start the day in the glens. And UV levels moderate to high at times, so a risk of sunburn. Rest of the afternoon into the evening, largely dry. Now, Sunday, here's our wiggling weather front. There it is, affecting eastern parts of the UK and pulses of rain moving north along it. So what that means for us on Sunday is a bit of an east-west split. You're guaranteed pretty much to have dry, fine weather the further west that you are, but come further east, cloudy with outbreaks of rain moving north. Temperatures around about the mid-teens, but the position of that rain is still uncertain, particularly between the different weather models that we use. This is our preferred model, the European model uh, for Sunday, but take a look at this. This is the UK Met Office model. They have the rain much further out east out to sea. It's quite unusual to have such disparity this close to the event, but if that happens, better news in the east, but showers developing in the west. Next week, a little more simple. Monday largely fine and dry, weather front pushing through on Tuesday, a few spots of rain and then high pressure becoming established by midweek, bringing, uh, bringing plenty of dry and fine weather. That's the forecast for now. Thanks so much, Chris. Now a reminder of tonight's main news. The family of the frightened rabbit singer Scott Hutchison have spoken of their overwhelming sadness at his death. Tributes have been paid by fans and fellow musicians after his body was found last night. And Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn has said all naval ships should be built in the UK. He was visiting Govan Shipyard. And that's Reporting Scotland. I'll be back with the headlines at 8 and the late bulletin just after the 10 o'clock news. Till then, from everyone in the team right across the country, have a very good evening. Bye-bye.